Let us see the internal structure of uh, the rhizome of polytrichum. This we can study it well under the transverse section. The transverse section of rhizome of polytrichum is roughly triangular in its outline and shows the outermost layer which is epidermis. The epidermis is made up of small rectangular cells which have thick walls. Most of the epidermal cells give rise to rhizoids. So the rhizoids are epidermal in origin. This is the outermost layer which is epidermis and from the epidermis you can see the rhizoids emerging out. These are the rhizoids. Below the epidermis is the cortical region. The cortex is made of three to four layers of cells. These cells are parenchymatous in nature. The cortex is not continuous but is interrupted by three radially elongated strands or three radial strands which emerge from the periphery and extend towards the center. These strands extend or they arise from the three corners of the triangular structure. So this is the cortex which is made up of parenchymatous cells, three to four layers in nature and then they are not continuous or the cortex is not continuous but is interrupted by three radial strands. The radial strands are made up of hypodermal cells towards the epidermis. These hypodermal strands or the radial strands towards the outer surface or towards the epidermis have thick walled cells with tapering ends. These cells are called as the prosenchyma cells. The prosenchymatous tissue forms the hypodermal region. Well, this is the hypodermis region which is made up of prosenchymatous cells. The prosenchyma cells are elongated, with thick walls and tapering ends. Below the prosenchymatous hypodermis, we find thin walled cells. These have larger diameter. and the strands 
with the prosencomatous hypodermis and thin walled cells together the complete strand is called as the radial strand. Exactly opposite to the radial strand we find thin walled cells which are parenchymatous polygonal in their shape. These cells are called as the leptoids. These cells resemble the sieve tubes of higher plants and they are living connected to one another by plasmodesmatal connections. These are called as the leptoids. Surrounding the leptoids there is a single layer of cells which contain starch grains. This single layer is called as the uh, myelom layer. So around each leptoid cells, cluster of cells, we find a layer of amylom. This amylom layer separates the leptoids with that of the central strand. Just below the cortical cells, we find a layer of cells which are radially elongated, thick walled and suberized. Their radial and horizontal walls are thickened. This layer of cells is the endodermis. So the endodermal cells are radially elongated and contain thick walled cells, suberized cells. The endodermis is also not continuous but is interrupted by the radial strand. That means we find fragment of endodermis, three patches of endodermis. Below the endodermis, two to three layers of parenchymatous tissue is seen. This parenchymatous tissue or three layers, two to three layers of parenchymatous cells forms the pericycle. In the center, we find a trilobed region. This becomes a trilobed region in the center. Because of the presence of these radial strands in the center, we find a trilobed region. This trilobed region is the central strand. The central strand contains two types of cells. Some of them are small thick walled living cells. These are called as the steroids. Interspersed in between the steroids, we find large empty cells 
which occur in clusters of two or three. These cells are called as the hydroids. The steroids and hydroids together are called as the hydrome. So the transverse section of the rhizome reveals epidermis, cortex and the central cylinder. Epidermis is made up of small rectangular cells which have thick walls. Most of the cells of epidermis produce the rhizoids. Below the epidermis is the cortical zone. The cortical zone consists of two to three layers of parenchymatous tissue. But the cortex is not continuous. It is interrupted by three radial strands. The radial strands emerge from the periphery and extend towards the center and they occur or they arise from the three corners of the triangular structure. The radial strand contains the outer cells which are the prosenchymatous hypodermal cells. These cells are thick walled, elongated with tapering ends. Inner to those cells we find thin walled cells which have slightly larger diameter. On all the three sides we find these strands. So a radial strand consists of the hypodermal region and the thin walled region. In the furrow of these radial strands that is below these thin walled cells we find some thin walled cells thin walled cells which are polygonal in their shape connected to one another by plasmodesmatal connections these are living cells these cells are called as the leptoids they resemble the sieve tubes of phloem tissue. Overarching the leptoids on all the three sides or in around the leptoid cluster, we find a layer of cells which contain starch grains. This layer of cells is called as the amylom. The amylom separates the leptoids from that of the central strand. Below the cortical zone, there is a layer of cells which is the endodermal layer. The cells of endodermis are radially elongated. They have thick walls. Their radial and horizontal walls are thickened. They are highly suberized cells. Below the endodermis, two to three layers of parenchymatous tissue is seen which constitutes the pericycle. The endodermis and the pericycle are also not continuous because of the radial strands. Because of this interruption due to radial strands, the central region appears as a trilobed structure. This trilobed structure is the central strand. The central strand consists of two types of cells. Some cells which are smaller, they have thick walls, smaller, they are living. These cells are called as the steroids. The other cells are bigger, they have empty lumens, they are dead, they appear in clusters of 2 to 3. These cells are called as the hydroids. Steroids and hydroids together are called as the hydrome.